Freedom's the answer. What's the question? You're listening to Ernest Hancock. Declare your independence of me, Ernest Hancock. How about some freedom, truth, justice, all that kind of stuff? And where are we going to get it? Uh, you know, hopefully the justice system. You know, whenever the government calls something something like a, you know, the the uh, Department of Defense, I, I liked it when it was uh, the War Department. We were at peace more often when they call it the Justice Department. And, you know, how much justice are we getting? Well, you know, it's not for fault of some of the good guys like John Buttrick. Superior Court Judge here in Arizona for Maricopa County in Phoenix, Arizona here. And I wanted to go ahead and talk about, you know, your interactions with other judges. And are they they feel an animosity towards you at no. all, or they just go, You're just you're just crazy. I, I don't I don't sense any animosity at all. I, and I think that there's a certain amount of mutual respect. Uh, for one thing, judging isn't. There are many, many, many cases that don't implicate any political issues or constitutional issues at all, but are simply mechanical or procedural uh, sort of tasks that we have to do. Those sound very boring, and sometimes they are. Uh, and sometimes we have uh, cases that rely on uh, principles of law that probably nobody, uh, even even no one here, would even find to be uh, uh, offensive in any way. And we spend a lot of our time on those kind of matters. Uh, so, and I think there's some general general respect, but generally speaking, uh, uh, they probably I'm reading mind reading now, but I would think that most of them view me as some somewhat of an oddball. Uh, I'm the only person, for instance, that's ever been appointed in the state to Superior Court or Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court, for that matter, that hasn't been either a Republican or a Democrat or an independent with some sort of ties to a sitting uh, governor. Uh, and uh, that's uh, that makes me unusual uh, because I come from a third party. Well, let's talk about that. Yeah. Why were you appointed? I mean, I you know you ran for governor in '94 against Fife Symington and Eddie Basha, which is a big right. uh, grocer here in the valley. You know, liberal Democrat, and you had a developer. You know, the Republican. Right. And you did a great job, just beat the snot out of them in all the debates and so on. You had a lot of support. Yeah, well, let's just say it, okay? All right, well, so, <laughs> there, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> a, yes, we did. So I, I'm, I'm wanting to understand, you know, the mechanics ah. of having Jane D. Hall, Republican, she was Secretary of State. I ran against her for Secretary of State. You did. She became governor. And finally, after an enormous campaign from a lot of people in support of you, he, you come out on top of all the reviews, all the people say how great and wonderful and, and judicial you are and that you should be a judge. Why aren't you appointing him as a judge? And then you we're appointed a judge, but you had to have a meeting with her. I mean, you, oh, you yes. explain how this happened. Yeah, well, in uh, Arizona, it operates in the way that about 16 other states do. Uh, we have an independent commission uh, that uh, is made up of about 15 people or whatever, and uh, a few of them are lawyers. Most of them are non-lawyers, and they sift through all the applications. I remember one time I applied, there were over 100 people applying. So sort of lots of people apply, uh, and uh, then you go to interviews with them, and then they send up... Uh, names to the governor, uh, and you can't uh, at least three names for every slot, and sometimes more, uh, and they have to be balanced in terms of political party. At that point, it becomes a black. Everything I just described is completely public. At that point, however, it becomes a black box situation. After the names go to the governor, then the governor may or may not, if he or she feels like it, talk to you, uh, and then they may or may not ask you questions of what they can ask whatever they want. It's completely off the record, completely in private. Uh, no access by the press or the public, uh, and then they make a decision as to whether, who to pick. Uh, and there's a lot of pressure, usually within the party of the of the of the uh, governor, to appoint judges who are the same political party. And I was really naive. I went through this whole process. It's a big long process. I finally got my name sent up to the governor. I go to to an interview with the governor, and I think, well, this is this is cool. I'm I'm going to be fine. I'm just going to tell her how I'm qualified and all of that. And the first question uh, out of her mouth, and I don't think she would uh, uh, deny this or feel bad that I was repeating this, her first question was, why should I appoint a libertarian? What's, well, why why, not? How is that going to help? <laughs> how is that going to help me? In other words, she was saying, how is that going to help me politically? 
all I can see is criticism, she said. That's paraphrasing uh, from appointing you. Why would I do this? And I then I, that sort of threw me back on my heels because I, I had everybody that I had contacting her, all nobody referred to any politics whatsoever. I thought that was the way to go. Uh, and I said, to her, well, you know, if there's no uh, Republican or Democratic hearsay rule. And I had all these clever things saying about how uh, judges shouldn't be connected to political parties at all. It didn't make any difference. She wasn't buying any of that. And neither was her chief of staff or any of the other people in the room. Uh, they wanted to know what kind of criticism they were going to get, and they were also, it seemed to me, suspicious of the fact that uh, you know I was some sort of bizarre person who was going to do something weird or something they didn't, meaning something they didn't like, uh, once I was appointed. Now that's Mark Victor's job. Yeah, we'll get to right. him. We'll get to him in the next segment. So I, I was not appointed that time, and then started the whole process over again. Uh, I eventually had that uh, citizens group, the appointing group, sending me up time after time after time. I've I lost count. It was probably eight to ten different openings. Uh, and I met with the governor, I think, three or four times. By the end of it, we were sort of old friends, and she was, uh, uh, I think, uh, trusting me. And there was, a, I wouldn't call it a groundswell, but there were a lot of people who were going to bat for me. Uh, it seems like everybody that I talk to thinks that they're the one to put me over the top. So you're like in everybody's debt forever. No, I mean, the <laughs> list of people that would send letters we're talking about from attorney generals and candidates and governors. and so Oh, I went to the Speaker of the House, uh, for instance. Uh, and this, once I figured out this, that, sh that the governor had to under be politically comfortable with what I was doing, I completely changed my strategy and went after politicians. Sitting politicians of her party, for instance. Former st uh, Republican uh, state chairs. Uh, the uh, Speaker of the House, who was Republican at the so time. So becoming a judge, being appointed, is a political campaign. It, it is a miniature uh, political campaign with a very small c constituency of people who might... You know who else made a call to the governor on my behalf? The guy you just mentioned, Eddie Basha, who I ran against for governor, mm -hmm. who was a Democrat, called her up and said, hey, you should appoint this guy. Uh, so she needed to get input from all over the political spectrum before she was comfortable with appointing somebody from a third party. Uh, now, would it work that way in another state, at another time, with another governor? I don't know. I only went around once, so I did, but it worked eventually. But it was a lot of, a lot of work. It took a well, lot of thinking it, and strategizing. Well, I tell you what it, it comes down to. It comes down to have a quality individual that you can appoint. She would, the, the, your judicial qualifications, that had nothing to do with this. Well, that's the baseline. You, you have to be, if you're not qualified at all, then no one's going to listen to you about anything. No, but anything. you keep getting sent up. Yes, that's true. I mean, true. They, you know, this is the top guy. You know, do him, do him, do him, do him. You appoint him, appoint him, appoint him, appoint him, appoint him. And finally, it just became an overwhelming thing. That I remember I was interviewed by the East Valley Tribune, and my thing was about freaking time. I mean, you know, what else am I supposed to say? <laughs> well, you know, who am I supposed to blame for this? It's you guys. You know what the straw was, I think, that finally convinced her was the last time. There happened to be two openings, and normally you, they would send three people on one list and three people on another list. This time they sent four people on each of the lists, and I was on both lists. That's the only time that they ever had ever done that. And I think that was such a strong message that she eventually sort of caved in. Yeah, this is, you know, we've been doing a lot of activity here in Arizona for a long time. And our penetration into the matrix, the injection of the libertarian infection for which there is no cure, has been started a long time ago. And John Buttrick was a big part of that, starting as early as 1994 and even before that. So we got skills. We'll talk about more about them when we come back here with Mark J. Victor.